Welcome to Social Gaming, I'm Gav Halliday and today we're going to be looking at June Awakenings again. Um, I've missed so many content drops, we're going to be taking a little bit of a, a deep dive into some of the interesting features I've just found on their, on their site, breaking some things down and we're going to be looking at some of the new content that's dropped and um, ideas and just discuss as we're going through these videos what we could expect from the game. Um, what I think they're trying to show us and we're just going to dig in, have a little look around. There's so much new stuff um, and I'm really looking forward to this game coming out. So one of the first things I've just found um, today is Shigger Wire Reels um, that they've released on, the, on their YouTube channel. I'd, I've not seen these before. Um, I need to check the date actually. Yeah, these were the first one was released 11 months ago so i don't know how i missed this but they really break down that initial trailer and give you some um, unique sort of ideas so what i've done is i've put all these sugar wire reels together there's about 12 of them um and, and brought down the little bits for you so you don't have to go around searching this stuff yourself right so there we go from the um from the trailer sandstorm and um, we've all seen this sandstorm uh, if you're a Conan player, Conan Exiles Age of War 3 player, then you'd have seen these sandstorms in that game. Obviously, in this game, sandstorms are a little bit more dangerous. And as you can see here, the sandstorms of Arrakis are huge and deadly, capable of tearing flesh from bone. If caught in one of these, a still tent may be your only hope. So a still tent um, seems like it must be... Some kind of tent that you must have to carry around with you everywhere just in case you get caught out in one of these storms. Um, I don't know if a still tent will be able to protect you 100% from these storms, but definitely a still tent will increase your survivability if you ever get caught in one of these storms, which you want to try and avoid in general anyway. And it's the Outfreen still suit. The outdated design and low cost mass production mean that no native of Arrakis would be caught in the open wearing this off-world still suit. So if you know any of the law to do with June in general, then you can't you, you basically it's really hot, you can't live out in the in the weather unless you've got some kind of still suit which will re uh, recycle the water that you lose back into drinkable water. Um, so you don't really want to be going anywhere without a still suit. Okay, here we are again from the trailer. So constructing buildings. You can't really tell here by looking at the video, but this is built on hard rock. Um, and then I think down here where the, the vehicle is, which we're going to go into shortly, is actually the, 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 the desert, the sand. So desert construction. And this base building. Structures on Arrakis must be built on solid rock or will eventually be destroyed by sandworms. Each piece fitted individually, allowing for infinite variety. Um, again, so this is base building. Some of these pieces are either well put together or they're just really big pieces. I, I don't know. Um, I do play Conan Exiles Age of War, which is another game made by Funcom, where I guess they took a lot of the lessons learned and put it into this game. The base building in that game is fun. Um, it's really enjoyable. How it works here, it will be interesting to see. But one thing you definitely can, well, you can do it, but you don't want to do it, is build your base on the desert sand because it will be destroyed by sandworms, which I'm sure we will look at sandworms shortly as this um, Chigga Wire series seems to be going through the entire trailer. Okay, one man ground car. I was actually, I saw one of these in another trailer recently, but I couldn't do a video on it because I was busy at the time. And I was trying to work out what actually this was called, but it's a one man ground car, um, single occupant only, very small, tracked vehicle. Looks a little bit like a, um, a, a snowmobile, but obviously for, for the desert sand. And these nimble vehicles are favored by scouts and scavengers for short distance travel only. So that I guess whatever fuels these vehicles, I'm not sure what power would fuel these. Um, I guess they don't have a large energy capacity and um, they can carry light loads and can be customized further with modules and um, which I like I mean that's pretty cool that like, you can customize the vehicle with different modules make it your own slightly um, what kind of modules 
the ground cars will have. I'm not sure. If you've got any ideas, let me know in the comments. Um, maybe radars, maybe an extended fuel tank, maybe extended storage, maybe things like that. Um, but they look pretty cool. But yeah, one man ground car looks looks very really awesome. I don't know if you can change the colour, but good if you could paint these things as well. Oh, here we go. And the actual standard ground car. So you've got the one man ground car and then you've got the ground car. The ground car looks pretty awesome. This looks like one of the main vehicles you might be using to drive around at Arrakis. Which, as far as I'm aware, you wouldn't want to spend much time driving around Arrakis as it might attract um, sandworms. But... Let's go through the description. It's versatile. All it's under, it's a versatile all-terrain vehicles with space for up to four passengers. So you and three of your teammates or clan members can all be in this vehicle, and so perfect for going out um, looking for a fight. I guess they can be outfitted with several specialized modules and can even serve as a light combat vehicle. And definitely can serve as a light combat vehicle if you've got four people in there. Are fully armed then just that itself is um you know something that you don't want to mess with unless you've got a force that can deal with it but yeah this the ground car looks pretty awesome it'd be good to see how the physics work and how they actually um do this because i think for funcom i think vehicles might be new because in conan exiles the edge of war it's horses it's vehicle it's it's animal mounts but here obviously they're focusing on vehicles i think this would be cool um, to see how they've implemented these things into the game. Alright, so I've seen this. I did wonder what it was. Um, I've only watched June the movie once. And I watched the latest one. I think it was 2021. Um, and I saw this thing in the sky. And this is what it is. It's a Highliner. So the immense spacing guild Highliner transport. Are a constant reminder of off-world scrutiny. Without consuming spice from Arrakis, guild navigators cannot foresee safe paths through space. So spice is the material that you can get from Arrakis. It's a very, very, I wouldn't say it's a rare resource, but it's a resource that's used for navigation in these giant ships. So any, all the space firing um, civilizations up there need spice to survive. And that's why spice is an expensive resource to mine. And that's why Arrakis is not just dangerous because of its atmosphere and wildlife. It's dangerous because spice is a very far after resource. Again, this is expected. I expected the game to have this. Um, you wouldn't go back in time. I mean, some games have gone back in time. Uh, Watch Dogs, for example, I believe that went way back in time from Watch Dogs 1 to Watch Dogs 2 I don't know what they did there but they, they, they lost a lot of really good content but Conan Exiles Age of War 3 already has day and night cycle why would you take it out for a game like this um, so when the sun sets the scorching surface temperature plunges so that might mean a lot of your gameplay you might want to go out and do stuff during the night which is opposite what Opposite to what you would usually do in most games, right? So usually at night time, it gets dark, you tend to hide away. But I think in this game, going out at night is a solution. Um, Freeman Water Discipline teaches us to travel by night and at dawn to harvest dew from shrubs that survive in the shade. So, yeah, travel at night, hide in the shade during the day, right? Down at the bottom uh, is your ground car, by the looks of it, your four-man ground car with a headlight on the front, so you can use the ground car at night time as well. And we've got some more building pieces here. And these building pieces, they look a little bit more squared off. Like you can see like one, two, three. It's cl that's clearly a, a three by three square build there, I think. Um, you can You can pretty much see that. It might give us a little bit more idea how, how that works. All right, villagers. Um, again, this is all footage from the trailer on the left-hand side. Okay, I've moved my camera. So here on the left-hand side, you can see a ground vehicle parked up there in the village. I'm just going to bring myself back on. Um, villagers, home to the most, home to mostly non-freemen locals. 
The villages of Arrakis are trade hubs for resources and information. Um, so it looks like you can come into the village. NPCs are going to be walking around, which I think will be cool. Um, even even if it's like this many NPCs, I'll be happy. If it's more than this and it, we still get a good FPS, I'll be happy. If it's less than this, then the villages might seem a little bit dead and, and not lively or realistic. Looks like a a single man ground car on the right hand side there and it looks like you can get information here as well so it says and information so maybe you can talk to these traders i'm thinking and maybe the traders will give you um information on locations that have been spoiled out in the in the in the map in the area of arrakis keep your weapon holstered or be prepared to face the overseen saduka they must be the authorities of these villages okay the exchange uh, the exchange looks like it must be a prominent sort of trading post or building um you got the npc stood there i like how if you haven't noticed th this entire village is underground um mainly because obviously it wouldn't survive not underground um those in search of player source tech schematics weapons and raw resources like spice can find them at the exchange or they can try their luck with one of the many other vendors that crowd the villages so the exchange is like your big exchange place i think player source tech schematic weapons and raw resources so that sounds like actually that's saying to me me as a player can come here to sell my spice my my schematics that i might have found my weapons some resources and then other players can go to the exchange and purchase that stuff maybe that's that sounds like what i was saying it says those in search of player sourced tech tech sourced by players and then if you don't find what you want there if there's no other players and they haven't found anything then you can go to the npc vendors and try your luck there so that's cool that's an interesting mechanic and it'd be good to see how that works. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at on the left here, we've got a an Omnifropter. Two Omnifropters, actually, and which I'm pretty sure we'll look at probably um, later on in this. These Omnifropters are awesome. Um, we'll, we'll definitely talk about them there. And I can't wait to get into one of these Omnifropters. We've got four people down here. One, two, three, four. They could possibly be actual players or maybe you can have followers i honestly don't know if we can have followers yet i've not seen anything about that the ecology lab so these are giant structures which you can find from the past hidden underground um and you can go and explore these to find tech loot and all that good stuff let's have a look at resources so ancient 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 stations built and forgotten by the first imperial explorers a few were later rediscovered by the freemen some were dedicated to the study of arrakis and the adaptation of species others were used for less conventional research so yes these are like dungeons i think i think these are going to be like vaults you'll be able to go in there explore and hopefully come out with something uh, valuable at the end Okay, um, cool. So this looks like it's the inside of one of these ecology um, ecology labs. You can see it's, it's very abandoned. It's got sand and build up. It's dark. Um, safety in numbers. So there's two people here. To survive and secure the most valuable resources on one of the most dangerous planets in the universe, many seek safety and power in numbers. So in this game, I know for a fact that you can create large clans. You'll start off by yourself. You'll survive in the desert trying to find water and shelter. Then after that, you will build a base. Um, after building a base, you will then need to start forming a clan. And once you form the clan, you will then need to defend and protect it against other clans. This looks amazing. I can't wait to be in this game and just walk into one of these ecological sites and just be like, wow, like, what, what are we going to discover in here? And again, these are the four people. It might be the same four people we saw on the last clip. But this looks awesome. Here we go. Everybody's favourite desert mouse. <laughs> um, 
The desert mouse has deep roots in Freeman mythology and culture. It is respected for its ability to survive in the desert, earning it the name Muad Dib. I probably, I probably slaughtered that name, right? Muad Dib. Making it a model of guidance for young Freeman. Um, I think in the movie these are quite useful things. Like if you if you, you saw these desert mouse, you, you could know maybe you could find water or something like that. I'm not sure. And um, but obviously these can survive. If you see these in the game, they they might hint towards something to help your survival, maybe or maybe they're just there. But these things are cute, right? I'm sure many people will like to have these as a pet, if possible. Just have one sat on your shoulder, why not? So the moons of Arrakis. Um, there's two moons in this shot. I don't know how many moons Arrakis actually has. It might just be two, it might be more. But first arise in the sky is Kreln, followed by the smaller Arvon. So this one up here is Kreln, this one of the bonds, Arvon. Also known to the locals as Muad'Dib due to the surface markings that resemble the desert mouse. Ah, oh, that's cool. So they must have markings on there that look like the desert mouse. Um, I did think the Muad'Dib was exactly the same name. Here we go. This is what I'm really excited for. I can't wait. And you know, I, honestly, I honestly cannot wait to just jump in my first Omnithropter. I hope it doesn't take a long time. I don't like to cheat in these games. I do like to have my own server. Um, and I will have my own server for June as soon as I possibly can. But I don't like to cheat. Okay, if I like to build my way up through the game and just explore it through its full, um, its full content. And the first thing I will be trying to grind for is an Omnithropter. Uh, or Omnifopter. I think these things look amazing. In the movie, they can hold quite a few people. Um, I don't know how. I don't know if it's going to tell us how many it can hold here. But in the movie, you definitely got two people sat in the front, and you can definitely at least get four people sat in the back. So, this might be a six-man vehicle. In the game, I don't know if it'll be a six-man vehicle, but this is definitely in the movie a six-man vehicle. It's amazing. It's cool. <laughs> I just want to jump in it and fly it around. Energy-wise, I don't know what it's going to run on. I don't know how you're going to power it. Um, but I think it'll be cool. It'll just be good to just have one of those sat in your base and you, f you just fly out. Um, but Omnifopters are extremely versatile craft used for scouting, combat and transport. Modified Fopters are capable of carrying other vehicles such as spice collecting sand crawlers. Really? I didn't think they were that big. Unless it's these bigger ones here. Obviously these bigger ones, I believe they can carry... Um, the spice collecting sand crawlers, which I think is one of these machines here underneath. I think it's already carrying one. The obviously the the small omnifropters I don't think can carry anything. Maybe a small load if they allow it in the game. But these big things here, the large omnifropters, they can definitely carry um, machines into into locations. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but in the movie they have this like um, they have the sand crawlers on the ground, and then when they detect that a sandworm is coming. These big omnifopters will be on standby and they will fly in, connect the chains up to the top of the sand crawlers, and then they'll just lift them off the ground. And then the worm will come and everyone will survive. But in, in the latest movie, the 2021 movie, um, obviously one of the chains fails and the thing gets destroyed. Uh, it's pretty cool if you've not seen it. But I don't want to digress from the video. Let's move on. Well, if you've seen that movie, then, you know, let me know. If you liked it. Right, here we go. The spice blow. So this looks like an event that will happen. Um, this is like end game. I think this is seriously end, like end game stuff. So you've got your base, you've got your clans, and then this is end game events. If you're if you're a single surviving solo, this would be a really dangerous place to want to come on a busy live server. Um, but yeah, I think this is 100% your end game stuff. This is where you get all your spice from. As you can see, you've got your large Omnifropter here carrying a sand crawler. This is going to go down there and it's going to collect spice, I guess. You've got these small Omnifropters. This one's already taken a hit. Um, these, This one on the left is firing a missile. It looks like this one's just dropped a missile. And they're, they're engaging um, ground units on the ground. 
which is another clan. This will be a clan v clan sort of thing going on here. They're, they're both fighting for this spice. And this is this is what you need. This is your, your end game sort of gameplay. It's getting these it's getting the spice blows before your opposing clan gets your spice blows. And yeah, this looks this looks awesome. Our oh, spice blows are violent eruptions of unrefined spice resulting from a buildup of underground pressures. They can be seen from huge distances. A massive, massive PvP event. Um these should be, really. Right, so much stuff in this video here. Um this is the follow one clip from the last one we just saw where the omnifuptors were in the air. You got a guy down here, he's got some kind of weapon. This vehicle here on the right hand side is a sand crawler, which is gonna collect spice. Um and that is that's possibly what it's doing right now, it's collecting the spice, just being in the area maybe. Um, an Omnifropter up in the air combat version being shot at by a ground vehicle of some kind. This could be a ground car um, with a machine gun module, maybe. Or it could be a different vehicle completely. I'm not sure. But air combat. Always listen for the telltale sound of an Omnifropter's wings as they can appear at any moment to devastate the battlefield. So Omnifropters are going to... They're a key vehicle in this entire... Um, game for all sorts of different reasons they look small enough that they'll be cheap enough to build and maintain um, and small enough that you can probably afford to lose one or two that they're probably going to be a really useful vehicle okay ground vehicle combat um armored ground cars so this is a ground car it's an armored ground car and other ground vehicles can provide impressive firepower and protection but be wary of worm sign. So the larger your vehicles, the more noise they're going to make on the ground. The more noise they make on the ground, the more likely you're going to attract a worm. So a large sandworm can devour vehicles and passengers in one go. Like one hit. You're not even going to see it coming. It's just bang. Um, but it looks like they've, they've mentioned worm sign here, which means there must be a telltale in the game, whether it be in an audio cue, whether it being some kind of um, warning or tremors or something. So then you as a player can go, okay, there's a worm coming. We've attracted a worm. We need to move out of this area. Just call in the uh, the Omnifructors and bog out. I love how this um, um, sand crawler here looks like it's going to run these two guys over. Boom. I, I want to go back a little bit there. Let me back up a little bit. What was that there? But I've stopped. I've paused it here because this ground car looks very different. That's a large ground car. You only see this for a very small amount of time, but this looks like it's got two large tracks on it and it is armored. It's a massive armored ground car. This is probably one of the largest tanks you can get, maybe. It's literally the same size as the sand crawler. And sand crawler are technically pretty large. And then you've got these guys holding their ground. So. Obviously, they've won the fight, and the ground spice will be theirs. These guys are bugging out because they've just lost their best tank. Infantry, uh, infantry to be un infantry not to be underestimated in combat. Those fighting on foot have access to gadgets and an array of deadly weaponry. A select few have even been taught to stretch the limits of human potential by great schools of the Imperium. So that's basically special powers. Um, you can use special powers and magic, I believe. Or it's not magic, but it's like magic. Um, but I'm 100% sure that using those skills and using your shield attracts the worm as well. Like all this here will be attracting the worm. That there and that there, that's the scale of the sandworm. And sandworms, the great sandworms of June roam the open desert and are sensitive to any rhythmic vibration, including footsteps. So even just running across the ground will attract these things. Seek the safety of rock islands and learn how to use a thumper to distract worms. So a thumper, if you've not seen any of the June movies, a thumper is like a small metal object that looks like a hand grenade and you stick it into the ground and it basically goes like boom, boom, boom. And it'll, it'll just thump the ground and it'll attract the worm to that location. 
I believe. So it's not the location you're actually at. It, it basically it diverts the attention of the worm away from you. Um, obviously, um, if you're on foot running across the desert, you're less likely to attract the worm than if you're driving a heavy ground car um, or using your, your shield. But you still can attract the worm running across the desert. Unless you do the special sand walk. In the movie, you can actually ride these things. And that's all nine parts of the sugar wire reels. That really breaks a lot of stuff down really good. Um, I, I don't even know how I'd missed all these before. Um, and thanks again. Remember to like and subscribe, it really helps. The inner eye to see its path. But the fear is gone. There I love this. Nothing.